Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now don't be quiet on me. Come on now. Let's give him some praise up in his place today. Come on. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And I can't do anything without his breath. I can't move without his spirit moving at all now. Hallelujah. They're going to be transformed in their inward man. Come on now. And when they've been victims 
<laughs> it might have been poverty stricken. They're going to arrive as victors. Come on, come on, come on. There's going to be a great reproduction coming forth from this place, says God. Because I'm drawing in those that even some have discarded. That some have even said was refuge. That some that even thought that the only thing that they had in life come out of the end of a needle or the end of a bottle, says God. Because I've burdened you in your hearts. And you have decided, God, that I want your will and I want your way. And oh God, use me. I heard you cry. Now I'm going to take you for your word. And I'm going to cause you to come in the path of even those that have felt discarded. Because many of you have even felt that sting yourself. Many of you have even felt the abuse from society and things that have happened in your lives. And even now, I'm even stepping up your recovery processes so that you can effectively minister my love. Because what's been missing from my body is the effective administration of my love. But I say this is the hour that my love shall cover a multitude of sins. And that my love is even now going in like a bomb of Gilead and covering a multitude of your sins. And even the healing that you needed. So that when I pour in my glory, it will begin to rise up and not leak out. You will be a container, a vessel of my glory. And you will spill out and not leak out, says the Spirit of God. God, we just give you praise. We just give you praise. We just give you praise, God. We just give you praise, God. We're the drug addicts. We give you praise for the crack addicts. We give you praise for the prostitutes, God. We give you praise for the one that's rejected and going suicidal. God, by your spirit, you go forth and minister to them, God, even before we can. Holy God, you're drawn on this hour, God. The church has got to get in position. we got to get out of the bless me party, God. God, we got to get about kingdom business, God. we got to know that this is a different hour. we got to know, God, that we have to release your kingdom and your power to these people, God, so that change, change, deliverance, healing can come, God. God, we just bless your name. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. Because, God, you sought us out. And now, God, you're seeking them out. God, we just give you praise. We just give you praise, God. We give you praise. We give you praise. I, I want to move, but I can't move. We give you praise. We give you praise, God. 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 We give you praise, God.
Yes. Come on. What are you talking about? We need to declare the releasing seed into the atmosphere. You know what? Your word, what produces life or death. But if it's infused by the Spirit and the power of God, when you declare that, they call it is a seed that's going to produce life. Come on. There's power in your seed. I was taken to the story. Come on now. I was taken to the story about Zechariah and Elizabeth. Come on. Zechariah, he was what? He was a temple keeper. Yes, okay? He was a minister. He was in the in the temple of God. And Elizabeth, his wife. And, and she was barren. And they had been crying out, God, we want to see our seed manifest. Come on. Come on. We all been there? We've been doing what we know to do in the temple. Come on. We've been serving God. Come on. Come on. We've been doing all we know to do. Come on. And we're saying, God, when is our seed going to manifest? Because until it manifests, you feel like you're barren. Oh, yeah. Come on. So they're crying out saying, where's the seed? Where's the seed? When is it going to manifest, God? Baby. Come on now. Come on. Because he's a forerunner for Christ. A forerunner. Come on. 
And I need to get to this. Hold me, Jesus. Okay. See, Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. See, sometimes when God speaks to us, we, we just start looking in the natural. How can this be? How's this going to happen? I don't have the finances to do this. I can't find the people that will support me like this. Come on. Come on. You start rationalizing in your mind when the Spirit of God has told you, boom, 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 boom. Come on. You have to get it past your flesh and let it get deep into your spirit. Then when man comes against you, and even if man don't support you, and even if you don't see the money in your pocket, come on. You've got to believe. And that seed that he placed in you has power. So what happened? What happened? The angel shut his mouth. See that? The angel shut his mouth. Because why? Because he was talking against what God said. Come on now. Sometimes when God means business, and if you can't get in alignment with it, he's going to shut your mouth. Come on. Because he don't want you talking against. What he's trying to bring forth. So we need to remember that. We need to be in the spirit concerning things that God said and not in the flesh because he can shut your mouth. Come on, come on, come on. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin place to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. We know the story. Come on, Mary was going to have a baby too now. Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Yes, yes, Lord. When you get impregnated by the Spirit of God, you've got to remember that's favor in your belly. Come on. That's favor in your belly. Because can't everybody carry what you carry? You got favor in your belly. He put that thing inside of you because you got favor. Come on. Come on. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You call him Jesus. You will be great and you will be called the Son of the Most High. Come on now. And she said, I'm a virgin. See, God never works things according to the natural realm. Come on. It's supernatural. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. See, now we got to we got to make this personal here. Because see, when you men are praying about the Spirit of God, we got to we got to remember that we're Mary. We're carrying a seed of Jesus. Come on. It's supernatural. Come on. It's going to birth out a dimension of Christ. It's going to birth out a dimension of the kingdom of God. We are as Mary. Come on now. We're carrying a seed of Jesus. He said, what? Make this personal. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. We forget this. Oh Come on. We're carrying the seed. We're travailing. Oh, we're going through, as I may say, hell sometimes. Oh okay? It's just a fact. Okay? Because the enemy, he knows the seed of Jesus. And we think it is about us. Come on now. It's not about you, baby. It's because of the seed of Christ Jesus that's in you. That's why the enemy comes to try to steal, kill, and destroy. That's why he tries to get you to miscarriage. That's why he tries to get you to abort. Come on. That's why he sends hair at the assassinator after you. It's because of the Jesus that's in you. Come on now. We gotta shift our minds and get out of this pity thing. Come on now. Whoa, it's me. Oh, Preston, I've done it. I've been there. I'm not saying nothing. I ain't done. But you know what? I had to grow up. And I had to realize it's not about me. It's about the seed of Christ Jesus that's in me. If he ain't doing it through me, he's going to do it through somebody else. Oh, oh, right. Right. It's about Christ Jesus. Come on now. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. We've got to remember this, ladies. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. If you're hidden in the shadow, the enemy cannot do what he wants to do to you. Amen? So the Holy One to be born would be called the Son of God. Even though Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive in the six months, for no word from God will ever fail. Come on. Amen. 
No word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. And the angel left her. See, we need to remember that no word from God, what? Will not go without being fulfilled. Amen? Amen. Come on. Amen. And then Mary, at that time, Mary got ready and hurried to town. You know, we know the rest of the story. But what I want to say to you is I want to elaborate. Because as I, as the Spirit will begin to minister this to me, I, I, I literally got up and had to run around my kitchen a little bit. Because I couldn't contain what I was feeling by the Spirit of God. Because see, I've been in this place for a long time. Come on now. You know, a few years ago when the Holy Spirit said after I was in service in another ministry, I was faithful as a honor bearer, as a teacher. I was, whatever they needed me to do, I did. Come on. I bowed. I bit. I committed. Come on now. I broke. I broke. I broke. I broke. I broke. I broke. Because it was their will, not mine. They will, not mine. Come on now. Sometimes that's what's wrong with the body. We don't know how to serve. <laughs> we want to preach, teach, and be seen behind the pulpit, but we don't want to serve nobody. You got to serve somebody before God will let somebody serve you, baby. <laughs> Come on, Jesus was a servant. We ain't no better. Jesus was a servant, first and foremost. Come on, we got to get that servant's heart back in us. Oh, yes, Whew, he's tight, but he's right, huh? Right. Zacharias means Jehovah has remembered. Oh, my God. Oh, come on now. All right. The daddy that was serving in the temple, who hadn't had a baby yet, that was crying out, his name prophetically means Jehovah has remembered. He didn't feel remembered. Okay. But his name meant Jehovah has remembered. He could outrun that thing if he wanted to. We can't outrun that. God remembers us. He remembers us. He knows who we are. He knows exactly what we're going through. Elizabeth means God of the oath. Get this. Get this. And God means Jehovah favored. Uh-oh. Come on. So you feel like God's forgotten you. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Or have you known those times if you're not going through it right now? Right. Have you not seen a manifestation of what has been promised so you feel discouraged and left out? That's it. That's Even if it felt like Elizabeth and Zacharias barren. Barren. Okay? But Zacharias continued doing what he did to do. He kept being faithful to God uh -huh. and remained in the atmosphere of holiness uh -huh. and in service to God. If we see in the atmosphere of holiness and service to God, see that dead will become resurrected and bring his life. Come on now. Angel Gabriel came to Zacharias and told him of the seed that shall produce. This would take place six months before Jesus was planted in Mary's womb. His name would be John, Jehovah favored. He would be a forerunner to turn the hearts back to the Father and the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of righteousness and prepare the people for the Lord. Because Zacharias, which means Jehovah remembers you. And because Elizabeth, God made an oath, your seed that's being planted in the womb be, will be favored as a forerunner for Jesus. Make that personal. Because he made an oath to you. Elizabeth. Come on, okay. come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Because he remembers you. Zachariah. Come on. And because what? The seed is favor. It's favor. It's a full run to Jesus. Come on now. We've got to make it personal. Because see, this is what the Spirit of God showed me, okay? Jesus, wait, okay, no, I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit. Let me help you here. Holy Ghost, i got so much that I'm trying to get out. Okay, but this favor that comes forth first in your womb, okay, that is to begin that process in you, okay? That is the anointing of God that's deposited in you by the Spirit of God to transform you, to prepare you for the ministry of Jesus that's later to come out through you. Yes, yes, yes. It's a process. It's a process. Uh -huh. Okay, you got me? That first favor, the Spirit of God that gets deposited in you after you get saved is the favor of God that gets deposited in you. Come on now. 
to transform you and prepare you for the ministry of Jesus that's to come. That is the forerunner. That's the forerunner. Okay. Oh. And, and let me break this down a little bit more because see, we're all called to do something. Okay. We're all called to do something. Whether it's fivefold or whether it's the ministry of health or it's intercession and a watchman, whatever it is, we're all called to do something. But see, this is what the Spirit of the Lord has been telling me here lately, is that first and foremost, we have to go through that season of birthing Christ out in us. You gotta say it, and then we birthed out the call. Yes. See, right. this yeah. is why the, uh, the body of Christ has been so messed up. All right. It's because we want to be the pastor, the preacher, the evangelist, the all apostle. Right. Okay, come on now. We want to do all these things that bring glory to flesh. Come on now. Before we birth out Christ Jesus in us. Come on. Come on. We have to birth Christ out in us first. In us first. See? Amen. The forerunner. We have to birth the forerunner out. Oh, my God. Come on now. And then, when the dimension of Jesus is birthed out of us, Jesus was all of it, baby. Yes, he was. He was the apostle. He was the man. He was the teacher. He was the preacher. Come on now. When we birth Christ out in us, we ain't going to have to worry about, oh, God, we're not going to operate as an apostle. Oh, God, we're not going to operate as a prophet. Birth Christ out in you. We got it backwards. We got it backwards. But God is bringing alignment. Come on now. He's bringing alignment. The Holy Spirit is as a favor that's planted in your womb as a forerunner, as I said. For Jesus to emerge. Come on. The world needs to see Jesus. He don't need to see me. Come on. He don't need to see me. He needs to see Christ in me, the hope of glory. Because when you start ministering to people that really need Jesus, come on now, they don't need to hear you. They don't want to hear you. They don't want to hear you. They got to have something with some substance. They got to feel the presence of God. They got to feel the love of God. They got to feel some hope coming out to gravitate to them. And if we in a selfish flesh are wanting to be seen, come on now, we're not going to be Jesus to them. Come on. Come on. I had to, I've had to walk this word. I've had to be dissected. I've had to be stripped. Because see, I ain't telling you nothing that I haven't had been processed from. I'm not standing up here trying to tell you, you know, something just to hear myself speak. It's because it's a road I've had to walk. And it's been a humbling road. And it's been a stripping road. And it's been a road that I felt by myself a lot of times. And it's been a lot of tears. Come on now. But you know what? My seed has power. Oh, 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 oh. Even my tears, Woo! even the tears that I have shed, that have power. Come on now. If they didn't, why did he say he knows how many of you cried and bottled them up? Come on now. If they, if they weren't worth nothing, why is he going to do that? Come on now. And like Zacharias, during the time that you see the favor is growing and developing as your forerunner, you go through a time of quiet and seclusion. Come on now. Because see, what happened was. Is remember before the baby was born, you know what he when when the angel shut his mouth because he couldn't say anything other than opposite of what, in question what God had told him. He actually lost his ministry for that season. All right. He went into a time of seclusion and shutting down. Yes. Come on, we we've, we've all felt that when yes. God, where are you at? What are you doing in my ministry? What are you doing through me? This time of wilderness, God, it doesn't seem like anything's functioning properly. It doesn't seem like, God, I'm not getting no invites, God. You know what? I just don't even feel like my ministry is doing anything. What are you doing, God? What are you doing, God? Come on now. People are receiving me, God. Come on now. You're not giving me those words like you used to give me. Come on now. I'm having a really press right now just to stay safe. I'm being real. Come on now. Come on now. Come on, Holy Ghost. We all have went through that season. Come on. Where it was a temptation to, to keep walking even though you didn't see anything or go back in the world because it seemed like the world was having more fun than what you were experiencing. Come on. If any minister stands there and tells you they don't face that, well, convict them, Lord, because I know that there's got to be some of the people other than me that have experienced that. 
Yeah. Not that I would ever follow it, but I'm saying you just get to that point yeah. where you don't see God in what you're doing because of the season you're in. All and right. it takes all that you can do to hold on. Yes, yes, yes. And get to the point of birthing. Yes. And seeing that manifestation. Yes. See, because even Zacharias and Elizabeth faced that seclusion. Yes. Their ministry was shut down for a season yes. until that seed come forth. Thank you, Lord. See, there's been many ministries that have had a hard time in this past season. Yes. Some of them have shut their doors down. Some of them have been having to pay so much for the bills of the ministry out of their pocket. They don't even know how they're going to function. I've been there, I know. A great percentage of my ministry comes out of mine and my husband's own income. And that is not right. Come on now. Season is turning and changing. Because God has taken us to a place of abundant living and abundant life. If we allow that work to be done inside of us, it can't help us spill out to the outer realms. Come on now. It starts in your depths. And when it begins to flow out, it's going to flow, baby. It's going to change everything around you. Because 